this AMA, which is focused on staff from all across the country, they're going to share their best advice on setting up new offices. Basically like the, what I wish I had known, or I wish someone had, had told me. Um, I'm pleased to welcome Kevin Kosar, who's going to moderate this panel. I'm going to turn it over to you, Kevin, so that you can get us started. All righty. Thank you very much. My role here is ministerial. I've spent 17 years in DC, worked at the Congressional Research Service, have worked at a couple of think tanks, but I have not run and set up a congressional office. So on this panel, I'm not going to add to that conversation. Rather, I'm going to trust the people with the experience who can tell you best and ask you each to go one by one and spend one to two minutes, introduce yourself, your current position, and then say, what what do you wish you had known when you landed on Capitol Hill? Or what do you think new members elect and transition staff should really know about setting up and running a good shop on the Hill? Uh, so my name is Ananda Bhatia. I am the LC for Seth Moulton. I've run the mail program for the past couple of years, and I'm also the head of the Modernization Staff Association. We do a lot of work with helping other offices uh, and their staff assistants and LCs setting up their office functions. So number one, I know we've some of the other members talked about how important it is to find a good CRM. Have to can't cannot overemphasize that uh, we're in the middle of switching as well from our old CRM IQ to Indigo, um, and coming up with those decisions up front about what your priorities are for your mail program. You know how many constituents. If your priority is to respond to people quickly or if it's just respond to them in depth, if it's to only respond to people who wrote you personally or to respond to every single campaign message you get in, having those high level conversations up front and then deciding based on that decision what CRM fits your needs best is really important because once you're locked into a system, it's so hard to make the switch. Similarly, the number one problem I hear from other LCs and staff assistants is that if you're in a new member office, you're getting inundated with messages, just like everyone else, but especially if you're new to the Hill. Uh, and it takes a bit to set up your system. So there's always, I hear of backlogs for like six months to a year in a new member office. And that means not only are you not getting back to people, which is important, you're missing casework, um, which is incredibly important. So coming up with, again, a priority system, of at the very least, we wanna make sure all of our casework is getting sorted through, or at the very least, we want to, be sorting out messages um, and maybe not responding right away to the campaign ones uh, can be in incredibly important. So um, I'm Chastity Lewis. I am the former district director for Congresswoman Terry Sewell and the former chief of staff for Congresswoman Patricia Wilson. Um, and I know that our time is short, so I'll just kind of get right into it. I think a few of the things that um, as coming in as a district director and setting up an office um, in the district but also watching it very closely in DC. I think a few things to, to avoid um, is hire for, especially for new members, hiring your whole staff at once. Um, in January, you really only need a skeleton staff, but members elect should not plan on completing the hiring process really until like February. There's really no, no rush um, because you wanna make sure you get good quality um, candidates, but also kind of survey what you might need. Um, one of the other things that I think you should avoid is not establishing cl clear communication and decision making systems right up front. Um, I think it's really important for all the staff to come in early, understanding the hierarchy and understanding um, who their reports are so that they can better communicate. Um, one of the other really big things that I wish we had um, taken a little time to do was trying to answer all the mail before you're actually ready. Um, in January, you get the keys to your office and a big pile of mail that's been piling up since, you know, really election day. And so being a politician, naturally, I think I, your inclination is going to be, you know, we have to respond to everybody quickly, um, but really taking some time and some thought to understand what your um, issues are and what your positions are on some of those issues. My name is Jonah Shoemate and I'm a chief of staff for Congressman Eric Crawford. He's the first district of Arkansas. And the first thing I'd like to say to everybody who's watching uh, with a new member elect is congratulations. Your hard work is to be commended for everything that you did and that you were a part of in your election. I first came to Washington um, with my boss after he was elected, having never served in any sort of elected capacity. And so my experience was anything but Congress. And so hopefully with what you guys see and hear today and 
maybe can leverage as resources for you all going forward. Uh, you'll pick up more of maybe what not to do from us all than what to do. Um, I'm still learning after 10 years. There's a lot that I think has radically changed even just over the last two and three years, let alone this year with COVID. And so I hope that uh, as we all share some of these insights with all of you today, you'll be able to pick up some things that I wish I had known from the start, such as uh, just the kind of mess I was getting into. Um, the mail, the phone calls, the emails, the work, the meetings, it's a lot. And you're gonna do great uh, because if somebody like me can do it, I think all of you will do even better. And so you are to be commended. Congratulations. I hope that we're all resources for you. But uh, if there's anything that, that I would close with this quick moment, and I think Chastney's right about Q&A, is that there's a lot left to learn. There's a whole lot of people that came before you that did it, did it pretty good. And you can do just as good, if not better than us. And that's the whole point of an institution like this, is that you learn from those of us who come before you who have a lot, hopefully, to share that you can do better. Everybody and thank you, Kevin. Um, I, it's an honor to join my esteemed colleagues here. Who, you know, you've got a, a great lineup of people who have done incredible things on the hill and can definitely give you some some ropes to skip and some ropes to know. I will echo all of the bright minds that went before me, and uh, I'll just build on what Jonah said about you know not believing you have to do it all yourself. One of the key things that's pulled me through, I've worked now for two freshman members um, and set up their offices. And you've got to have, for chiefs and staff, you've got to have your circle, your text chain of people that you can call on and ask those questions. Because, you know, when you come to the Hill, everybody wants to give you advice. And it can be overwhelming who to trust and, and the conflicting advice. Um, you know, do I go with this or that? Um, but develop your circle for members. Also, that is so impo incredibly important, having that circle of members um, that you can rely on and can be your go-to. The other thing is stay flexible. Many people, you know, when you come to Congress, um, you're there because you're the smartest person, you're the best person in your town, you've made it, um, and you're used to being a, a big fish and maybe a smaller pond. Be patient with yourself because Congress just moves so remarkably uh, slow. And so get one or two goals that you can knock out this year. Um, the last pro tip I'll say is track what you can. We've got great, I think you all are diving into some of the constituent management services. So people who uh, call your office, people who write to you, tagging that information so that you can go back um, and touch those folks later. I've had um, great uh, benefits out of iConstituent and Tour Tracker and Polyscribe are some of the tools we've used in our office. But I think um, managing your constituents and staying in touch with them through some of that great technology um, are things that are tips I would encourage you to, to think about as you approach setting up your office. Um, I'm Maya Estes. I am Chief of Staff to Congressman Anthony Brown um, uh, from Maryland's 4th Congressional District. He is, um, and I was the chief that helped him set up his freshman office. I think it is important for um, all of you that are chiefs or that are helping to set up the office um, to just be reminded that you will survive, right? Um, <laughs> that, um, in fact, your member will find his way or she will find her way to and from the first set of votes. Um, and they will actually find their way back to the office eventually, <laughs> no matter what. So th that's one thing I would echo what everyone else has said. Um, be patient, uh, be flexible. Um, but I think there were a couple of things in addition to what um, Keenan and Chaz and Jonah have already shared. Um, for those of you that are the staff designate representative, chief of, soon to be chiefs of staff, um, I think it's really important to have a conversation with your member at the outset um, to understand those two or three goals that they want to accomplish, um, because that can be really helpful to you to understand what type of office you're going to be setting up and what your end goal is. Um, I agree 110% with Chaz, um, with Chastney, that um, um, you want to wait um, for all of your hiring. You want to leave space to kind of um, hire those things that you need 
and make sure that it fits with the committees and the type of work that your boss wants to do. But I do think it's important um, early on. Um, my first best hires um, were my district director um, um, and uh, in, in our scheduler slash director of operations. Um, that is going to be um, a really big part of helping you get there. Um, um, you've heard this before, I'm sure, but I would say think of yourself as um, a small business. Um, you know, you are the HR department, you are the um, 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 the first kind of, of refuge for all things, right? And, and there's not going to be anyone sort of swooping in to check in to make sure, you know, these things were taken care of. And so really, you know, pull together your own checklist of the things that you want to accomplish um, and the things that are necessary. Uh, here's my pro tip. Um, um, our first day, our phone started ringing off the hook. I didn't have enough people to answer the phones. Um, literally, um, Robert Primus, uh, who is an institution in and of himself on the Hill, was walking into our office to say hello. Um, and he started answering our phones for us, right? He's like, you know, with the standard line. Um, but again, having in hand or ahead of time those things that, hey, here's our script, here's the way we want to have our office be presented, um, is helpful because then as people are coming in, whether it's your intern or whatever, you can say, here's what I want you to say. Um, and, and then finally, um, that once over before you get into the office is also important. Um, you will soon find that the house is full of um, lots of helpful um, different administrative setups, but they are all, there is one person that will hang the bracket for your TV, someone else to hang the television, and someone else to make sure that it's working properly and attuned. And so um, for the members or members elect that we have on, I beg you to be patient with your chiefs and with your office managers, because um, it's possible you may not have a TV when you walk in. Um, in addition to not having enough people on the phones, we didn't have trash cans, <laughs> right? Um, and um, I would just say that the really beautiful thing is that, you know, co um, Congress really is a family and what you'll find is that there are a lot of people that are willing to help you with those, um, what seem like uh, benign or, or, or I want to say asinine. I don't know if we're allowed to use those words, but asinine questions, right? Um, and um, having your own network, like Keenan mentioned, um, and not being afraid to say, you know, I, I don't have any paper to print that, sir. So um, let me go across the hall and see if I can find some paper. <laughs> that is all a part of that first week. And so, you know, none of those details are too small to get overlooked, but be patient with yourself overall. You know, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, just to add on my own, uh, when I started at the Library of Congress, the Congressional Research Service, one of the first lessons I learned was when I had a question, just go ask somebody in person. Don't dig around in the rule book and try to figure it out because that would just suck up hours. Go to somebody who knows the answer. And I think that kind of applies across the board with navigating Congress. Uh, Rick, I wonder if you uh, would like to share a, a pro tip for the audience. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Three things really quickly. I, I'm, I, I would underscore the idea of hiring slow, um, but you have to accept that you're going to feel a little bit like you're falling behind when you do that. Uh, you're going to be flooded with scheduling requests, flooded with emails, flooded with um, calls, flooded with new casework. And so you have to have a system, a repository for where all that information goes, ideally an email or a way in which people are going to respond to constituents to just essentially say, hey, look, um, I'm still figuring out where the light switches in the bathrooms are like but i but your your you it, what you know your communication means is important to me and we're going to get back to you and then you have to have a system to collect all that information and get back to people because you're going to have to unbury um, after that and so it's really important to be thoughtful in what that structure is of collecting that information and then responding it because the last thing you want is to come straight out of the gates and be you know the member of congress with the reputation for not returning the calls of their constituents so that's super important 
Um, with all that extra time you're going to have, um, once you do that, I would say spend time to carve out and actually sit down and think about your vision, mission, and values as a individual and as an organization. It's going to be your North Star and keep you on track um, throughout your entire tenure. And it's going to be the thing that your entire team is going to fall back on and feel empowered to make more effective decisions in your name. Um, and that you're going to be able to push more down the chain of command if people are all on the same page in terms of the vision and the mission and values of you as a member and your team. Um, and then the last I would say is um, there's nothing that has been more important to I think the cohesion of our team and our efficiency than sort of two tools, um, Slack, um, you could also use Teams. Um, it, you know, we use that basically for, for consistent um, you know, uh, uh, shared consciousness across the entire team. We, we basically don't use email internally. Everything gets decided and discussed via Slack. And the second thing is our morning standup. Um, no matter where anyone is, we're all on the video conference at 845, the member included, to say what's going on in the world, what's going on in Congress, what's going in on, on in the district, what's the members' priorities and what's the team's priorities, um, ready, set, go. And in addition to getting centered on kind of a 24 hour cycle, um, it really forces us to look at each other. So like when I see Ananda every morning, I see her humanity, I know who she is, you know, and I am more likely, you know, it's just human nature sometimes, I'm more likely to remember to respond to that email or that text or something like that when I see her every morning. And so um, Slack and Stand Up has been revolutionary in terms of cohesion of our two offices. Thank you much. Yuri, last but not least, would you like to share a pro tip? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm going to definitely hit on kind of this, the, the thing I wanted to talk about a little earlier about hiring, right? Um, I, you know, right off of what Rick said, it's really important when hiring not just to look for, uh, for someone with experience, a long resume, and with a good attitude. Those things are very important, but you should also be looking for people who think about processes, like how they do something. And then and when they're done with that, why they did it that way. Because, you know, there's plenty of people who can answer the phone, but you want someone who who sets up a process for how that then gets handled and sorted and responded to, and is thoughtful about it and is creative about it. But that also applies to your legislative staff. That also applies to your manager. So when they're kind of working out how do we retain people, they are able to put in place processes um, that, 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 that will work out to that. And you, questions about, um, you know, if you're hiring a comms director, what would you do if we're rolling out a bill? What is, what are the, what's the whole package? What would you do to get this out there rather than just saying a press release, right? Like they can kind of create a process for it that creates some structure for every time you do it. So it doesn't feel like you're, you're doing it for the first time every time. And on the other side of it, you as a, a new member of Congress or um, a chief of staff, I think the biggest complaint and frustration you will get from staff and why they won't want to stick around is uh, is if you are unable to make decisions. Uh, people get very frustrated when they uh, just don't get an answer. And, you know, you are going to make mistakes as a new member of Congress in a new office, and you can fix mistakes as you go along and you can seek guidance. But every decision you don't make is a mistake and a missed opportunity. So learn to make decisions and learn uh, to fix them when they don't go right. Um, and if you have a, an, uh, a reputation as an office who gives opportunity and, and you know gives positive feedback and sets up structures that you are comfortable and understand working within, and you can receive um, a decision on uh, important tasks you're working on, your office will get a great reputation and you will be able to hire and retain that staff on the Hill. All right, thank you very much. A question regarding training. Those who are setting up a brand new office have a million things to do. Training, Where? how do you prioritize that? Where does that fit in terms of the sequence of things to do? Where should you go for training? What other advice do you have on that? Um, so I think as far as training goes, one thing that I've learned and have been advising a lot of freshman offices is get somebody who has worked on the Hill in your office and a part of your team as quickly as you can if you're new. 
Um, I think that training is so important, but there's not so much time for it on the Hill. And so if you're a chief that came from the campaign or you came from the member's state office, it's important that the scheduler or the LD or the communications director can jump right in. They, someone who knows the committee, someone who knows um, the process. One of my, what I was able to do in my most recent office was hire uh, staff who had been on the Hill and they could train, the, the immediate managers could train the people beneath them. The district director could train the district staff. The legislative director could then, in turn, uh, train uh, the led correspondent and legislative assistants, and that cut down on um, a lot of the the you know time to just give everybody from A to Z because so much of the work we do has to be on the fly. I'll jump in real quick. I think I think one thing as a chief. And if there are members elect watching, I think it's important that that you guys and girls look at ways to do this with your former, current, or incoming chief of staff. And that is to understand the talents and the strengths that you have and delegate what you don't. And I think the one challenge that comes with being an effective manager, not being a great or exceptional, but even just being effective, is delegating tasks and skills that you're not good at, but keeping the ones that you are. And training is one of those where uh, I'll be totally transparent and self-depreciating. I was not a good writer when I got here. And what I mean by writer is the formal um, writing tone that we use in our letters and the communication that we use that is, that is on the official letterhead. And so when there's training that anyone on staff needs to do, and depending on the process that is set up for all LAs or if it's LCs or, or whatever hybrid scenario that you've got, Looking at those letters and and, and assessing and, and training folks on writing was not something I would have ever taken on. I'm a much better writer now, and there's a lot of things I can see and that I enjoy doing as I've learned as I've been on the Hill. But when it comes to training, understand your strengths and your weaknesses. Delegate what's a weakness to those who have the strength. Make sure that there's accountability and follow up and see how that's going. But it all, I think, centers around not only what Keenan said, but also Delegate what you're not so good at, but delegate a lot of things and make sure that folks have the ability to make decisions and find the ways by which training or improvement or any sort of changes need to occur. There's a lot of great opportunities for training that weren't there when I started 10 years ago. The Staff Academy, um, there's a lot of resources that are there now that weren't there and were harder to find and were just kind of isolated and siloed off in any office in Rayburn, Longworth or Cannon. And so there's a lot more resources now, and a lot of those are online, and they've moved online very adequately um, and very, very good since COVID. And so they're very easy to get to. So that would be my suggestion for any incoming chief or member is to just know what to delegate, uh, those strengths and weaknesses. Be okay with that. It's fine. You're, 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 you can't be at all. And that's the biggest lie of Capitol Hill is that you've got to do it all because you can't. And you'll, <laughs> you'll run yourself into the granite if you try. Yeah, because there really are four pots of training. There is the formal stuff that's set up, which has improved remarkably, which includes Staff Academy, CRS. Uh, you know, those are the formal ones. And there's a great list. If you go on Staff Academy website, you'll find all sorts of really cool stuff there. There's the less formal stuff that's being put on generally by uh, caucuses or staff associations. Um, I help run Digital Academy, which we run a six week course. Um, that you have to be admitted to and participate in, and it teaches basic fundamentals for uh, for digital communications. And then there is peer-to-peer, -peer, and that gets to hiring someone who's been on the Hill for a while and has experience, because if, I haven't, if I'm setting up an office, I will, I know two or three other offices that I think run really great uh, LC programs, and I'll have their LC train my LC. Um, so that's peer to peer. And then the last are the outside groups. You do have access to them. They do often, they will work with you. Um, and I've brought in outside people to teach um, courses on op-ed writing. I had a professional op-ed writer come in and run a training with my team. And then they all wrote op-eds placed. Um, I've had a professional speech writer come in and provide a speech writing course for our, for our comms team. Um, some of these, you know, you can find uh, you know, people who do this as a side business and are willing to offer one-off courses for relatively reasonable prices, um, and you can work with them. And then lastly, you can actually, in this fourth bucket, in this outside bucket, 
you can send your staff, you can pay for professional development. Um, we paid for someone to get a graphic design course. It wasn't a very expensive one. For a while there, I used to go around and teach offices how to use Slack. And I would, I would show up to their like staff retreat and show up Microsoft team. Now everybody uses it, but that wasn't always the case. Um, and then look for outside opportunities. There are lots of trainings going on uh, that are affordable that you can set, you can invest in your staff to do. Create a line item in your uh, in your budget and that is specifically for staff improvement and development. And whether that's bringing someone in or sending one of your staffers out, invest in your team. Decide ten thousand dollars in our MRA for staff for staff training um, and set an expectation that people would do 40 hours of personal professional development um, every year. We, we incorporate that into our quarterly uh, goal planning process. Um, I'd say we've been hit or miss, like life gets in the way, we get busy. And so for the 117th, we're sort of building in, actually tracking whether people are following through or that or not in our kind of goals and, and dashboard process. So one of the biggest problems that our staff association tries to address is the fact that for junior staffers especially, there really isn't a universal training and a place to figure out everything you need to know. So we're working on creating a working from home guide for COVID and a best practices guide for after that will hopefully answer a lot of those questions in a one-stop sort of place. But until then or until you can go to, even if you go to some of the basic trainings that there are out there, the fastest way to get information, like where do I find trash cans, which is really important, but really hard to just look up, um, is to just build your networks out for sure. So all staff assistants and LCs have access to joining these large listservs um, of just other staffers on the Hill. And you see those questions flying back and forth all the time. So I'd say find others, you know, junior staffers in your delegation, join those listservs and just ask people directly those easy questions that will, will take you way too long to try to figure out on your own. I'm, I'm sure a few people on here could teach a master's course on how to reserve a room. Oh my gosh. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also on our list. All righty. We're at the end and I'll be, hey, I need to step back and hand things over to Nicole, but if I may just add one last quick thing. Um, if you need help finding esoteric facts, information, reach out to the Congressional Research Service. They have an army of analysts and reference librarians. So rather than having your staff spend hours going down a rabbit hole looking for some small fact, kick them all over to them. CRS is always there to help. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Kevin. And thanks to everybody for this panel. This was so amazing. Like, I mean, I'm a staffer for life, so I'll say what you're not supposed to say. Like, I knew the staffer panel was going to be, like, amazing because <laughs> it's, to, to Yuri's point, there are all these formal things that happen on the Hill, but there are also all these very informal things. Um, and so for the, the staffers that are coming to the office, I would say to you, um, some of the advice that, the, that you've heard today is when someone says, hey, y'all are new, how are things going? Resist the urge to be like, oh, everything's fine. Like, so we actually don't know where trash cans are. We don't know how to answer phones. And people will say, oh, yeah, we have that issue, too. Or they'll direct you to the people that you need to know. You can literally stop people in the hallway and ask them whatever you want in Congress. Because your question, someone else has been exactly there. And people want to be helpful. If we, if we hear somebody say it's fine, it's like, Come on in and let's have some coffee. Let's have a let's, let's sit down and talk for a little bit. Exactly. It's not <laughs> fine and it's totally okay that it's not fine. You have a network of people who are gonna help you get to a point where that it will be fine. It will be fine. So just speak up, ask questions when you need it, and to Keenan's point, you'll start to filter out things as well. So again, thank you so much for the panelists. Thank you all for joining us and for sharing. Thanks, y'all. <laughs>